So, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the launch of the 2019 EU Drug Markets Report. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, I'd just like to introduce our panel today. So, we're very honoured to have with us again today uh, the European Commissioner Dimitris Avramopoulos, uh, Commissioner for Migration, Home Affairs and Citizenship. Um, the Commissioner has launched many reports with us in the past, including the previous Drug Markets Report, and we're very happy and honoured to have him with us again today. Uh, we also have on the panel the EMCD DA Director Alexis Goosdale and the Europol Executive Director Madame Catherine de Bolle. Uh, so first of all, uh, the Commissioner will speak, so I'd like to pass the floor to the Commissioner. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a nice day. <clears throat> As it was said before, I'm more than happy to share this event with you today. Uh, you know that I'm running the last minutes uh, here in Brussels. Normally I was supposed to be in Strasbourg today, but uh, I had decided to share this moment with you. And I'm more than happy uh, to share this uh, moment with two good friends uh, and uh, very capable uh, directors of their agencies, uh, Katrin and Alexis. But on top of that is the high sensitivity of this issue. I had embraced all efforts made by EMCD from day one, and I'm more than happy to see that uh, there are very concrete and tangible uh, uh, results in uh, our common efforts. So, again, I would like to express my thanks to you and um, to your staff, Katrine and Alexis, and the EU Drugs Agency for the tremendous, believe me, work uh, you've done during these past years to address the challenges related to issues, to drug issues. The evidence provided in the third European Drug Markets Report and the links to organized crime, it uh, draws are a major contribution to informing us policy makers, as well as all those involved on the ground. <clears throat> it's very important that we're here uh, together today because drugs is as much about health as it is about security. If we want to truly protect our citizens, the two must go hand in hand. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, this report presents a worrying picture of Europe's drug market, one that is evolving rapidly. Drugs are increasingly potent and pure when they arrive on the market. There has been a record number of seizures which, together with increased production in the European Union, points to growing availability of illicit substances. We have also seen a dramatic increase in new and often highly potent synthetic substances appearing on the markets. This results in more drug overdoses, deaths, and individuals seeking help from treatment providers and emergency services, but also in more violence and crime. <clears throat> As you know, organized crime benefits significantly from the drug trade. Moreover, violence and corruption long seen in drug-producing countries is now increasingly evident within our home, within the European Union. This is linked in part to the huge profits that the illicit drugs trade providers and the growing willingness to use violent means to extend market share. It is also driven by Europe's growing importance as a drug producing area. Organized crime, as you know, is a forward <coughs> sorry the team <coughs> sorry <coughs> thank you organized crime is a forward looking and quick to 
innovate in order to reduce threats to its business model or seize new opportunities. Drug markets have become more digitally enabled. When uh, purchased online, they can be rapidly transported across borders and deliver, delivered to consumers. This creates new challenges for law enforcement, and this means we must be equally innovative and forward-looking in our responses. The drug market is now one of the major sources of income for organized crime and is linked to other areas of criminality or even terrorist activities. It is an important driver for the recruitment of young people into criminal organizations and gangs. <clears throat> Let me be clear. The increasingly global nature and reach of groups involved in drug production and trafficking is a major cross-border health and security threat. Confronted with uh, such a threat, the European Union must step up its efforts to fight these criminal activities while keeping drugs policy anchored on a balanced and evidence-based approach. At the EU level, I can say that our efforts the last five years have started to bear fruit. The latest action plan on drugs legislation we adopted on new psychoactive substances provide a strengthened response to the newly emerging health and security challenges in the area of illicit drug use and trafficking. Moreover, our work with uh, our international partners is starting to gain traction. For example, <clears throat> Europol, in cooperation with Eurojust and the law enforcement authorities of Germany, the Netherlands, and the United States, took down the second largest market on the dark web known as the Wall Street market. Dear friends, I suspect that this will be, I suspect, my last press conference as European Commissioner for Migration, Home Affairs and Citizenship. Believe me, it has been a privilege to serve the Union these last five years, and you know, you, you all know why. <clears throat> When I started with you, no one knew, no one could imagine that migration and security would race to the top of the European, and not only to the global agenda, and stay there. And unfortunately, they will be there for many, many years. This commission made security a priority from day one. <clears throat> We have taken <clears throat> many decisive decisions to modernize the European security framework through new legislation, through reinforced operational cooperation between member states, and through strengthening the role and involvement of our agencies. The European Union's Drugs Agency and, Re and Europol, as well as all of the agencies in the Justice and the Home Affairs family, have played, believe me, a critical operational role in our policies. Without them, we would all have done our jobs less well. Over the last five years, we have come a very long way and have accomplished much, but the, that work is not finished today. It will continue under the new commission. <clears throat> and when it comes to our fight against drugs, we need to continue showing determination and commitment in order to strengthen our fight in all its aspects for our youth, our citizens, and of course our societies. <clears throat> Once again, I would like to express my gratitude both to Catherine, she had her name day in Greece yesterday, <laughs> and to Alex, who is speaking Greek, so I try to link them both to, <laughs> to my country because I'm going back home and I want to keep this friendship alive for the future. They've done a fantastic job. I'm grateful to them. Europe is in good hands. Commissioners come and go, but the agencies are here, and all the ones who have been striving for the last six years to keep the European project and the European vision alive. And during the last five years, we were all confronted with huge challenges that had put at stake the European project. 
in the heart of that was migration and security. But uh, in all my efforts, I was accompanied by capable people, convinced Europeans that are here with me today, and I wish them all the best from the heart for the future. Thank you very much for being here today. Thank you very much, Commissioner. I'd now like to pass the floor to Alexei Gosdale. Thank you. Dear Commissioner, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, first I, I would like to thank all the staff of EMCDDA and the staff of Europol that have been working those three years collecting the information, making all the analysis. Of course, I have a special thanks to my good and close colleague, Catherine de Bol, the Executive Director of Europol, uh, for support and for very close and very fruitful cooperation. The report covers trends along the supply chain from production, trafficking to distribution and sales, even if today we are going to speak more about market than about the problems associated to the use of those substances. As the Commissioner said, uh, and is putting us uh, under challenge because we launched together the previous report, so what has changed, what is new? The main answer is that the European drug market is changing faster than before, both under the influence of internal and external drivers, and uh, you have in the report a very uh, detailed and uh, uh, holistic analysis of those changes. What we observe today is the hyper-production of drugs within and beyond EU borders, which is leading to high availability of natural and synthetic substances. This means that now consumers have access to a diverse range of highly potent and pure products at a very affordable price. As the Commissioner mentioned, a mounting concern is the rise in drug-related violence and corruption within the EU, and this is a very worrying evolution of the situation over the last five years. First of all, the drug market remains a major source of income for organized crime groups in the EU, and we estimate that the Europeans are spending around 30 billion of euros every year uh, for uh, the retail level. It doesn't encompass the value or potential values of seizures or of uh, or any in interference with the drug uh, business. Here we talk only about the money that is spent by people who are using drugs in Europe. Around two-fifths of this total, 39%, is spent on cannabis, 31% on cocaine that has taken out the second place, not only as the second most consumed drug, but also in terms of market value. And uh, uh, heroin is the third with 25%. Finally, amphetamines, methamphetamines, and uh, MDMA ecstasy represent 5% of that market. Let's have a quick look at the uh, key drug markets, put, let's them put uh, under the microscope. Cannabis is the largest drug market in Europe, worth at least 11.6 billion of euro, with some 25 million of Europeans who have used cannabis at least once last year. While cannabis, herb, and resin still dominate, we see new products that are appearing on the drug market, and uh, this makes monitoring of the potency and potential health effects essential. We also observe increased violence that is associated uh, to the cannabis business between organized crime groups, and this is putting an added strain on law enforcement activities. Let's have a look at heroin and other opioids. Opioids still account for the largest proportion of harms associated with drug use, and the heroin market is estimated at least at 7.4 billion of euros per year. There are approximately 1.3 million of people who are considered as problem opioid users, mainly of heroin. Talking about market and trafficking, the Balkan route remains the key corridor for heroin into the EU, but there are signs of increased heroin trafficking along the southern route, particularly to the, through the Suez Canal. There is also evidence of the diversion of the chemical precursors that are needed to produce those drugs. And those precursors, they are being produced in Europe and uh, uh, they are uh, being smuggled and to, from the EU to heroin producing areas. <laughs> we also notice, although not in the same proportion and in, in, the, in the United States, that uh, there are highly potent synthetic opioids like the fentanyl derivatives that are responsible in the US for, for the big wave of drug-related <clears throat> death. 
while they represent also in Europe a growing health risk, but still not in the same proportion. These are increasingly traded online and dispatched by post. Let's come now to a, a drug that uh, has uh, called a lot of attention in the recent years, which is cocaine. There is a record production and corresponding expanding markets for, for cocaine, with a market retail value that is estimated at minimum 9.1 uh, billion of euro. This is the second most common, uh, the most commonly consumed illicit drugs in the EU. We have around 4 million of Europeans that report having used the drug in the past year. But we need to add to those people, those who have more recently joined and are consuming not only uh, cocaine in its uh, more common version, but also crack cocaine, and there are worrying signs of an increase in the use of crack cocaine also in Europe. Use is still concentrated in South and West Europe, but the market appears to be spreading, including outside Europe, like for instance in the Western Balkans. Record production in Latin America has intensified trafficking to the EU, mainly to maritime containers, where record seizures have been recorded. And the presence of European organized crime groups in Latin America is also changing the dynamic and uh, allowing them to manage the supply chain end to end. It is also uh, disrupting the market, not only in Europe, but uh, in Latin America, and uh, there are a lot of changes intervening in the, in the organization of those trafficking routes between the sources and the EU. And also increasingly, it seems that Europe, is, uh, the EU is, is emerging as a transit area for cocaine that is destined to other markets like Mid Middle East and Asia. For amphetamine, methamphetamine and MDMA, the estimated value is 1.5 billion uh, euro a year. They are produced for domestic production and export. They make up around 5% of the total EU market. Uh, more recently, we have noticed that uh, the, not only the market is very well controlled, we have also other organized crime groups that are intervening in the market, for instance, Mexican cartels, who are controlling the entire logistic chain. Finally, the new psychoactive substances, we discovered five, uh, 55 new substances, one per week on the European market last year. Source countries are China and India. The total of substances that are, have been detected and that are monitored by, by the EMCDDA together with Europol and with the support of other EU agencies amount to 731 substances. The NPS continue to represent a very important threat to health with potent synthetic cannabinoids, synthetic opioids, and fake benzodiazepines appearing on the market. Those uh, create more, uh, are at the origin of more health emergencies, acute intoxications, and deaths. Dear Commissioner, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, the contemporary drug market is increasingly complex, adaptive, and dynamic. It is also more global in nature and more interlinked than in the past. In addition, as the Commissioner highlighted of the direct impact on health and security, the drug market has also indirect and wide-ranging negative consequences on other important policy areas. It includes violence and community safety, economic development and governance, and the environment. Finally, the human and societal costs associated with the drugs market remain considerable. The reduction of the harm associated with the drug market should remain a priority. So you will ask me, what can we do on the top of what was done? And the commissioner explained, we made some good progress in the recent five years. Still, we have a lot of work in front of us. The, the work in that area must remain an absolute priority. And this report is a clear wake-up call for policymakers to address the rapidly growing drug market. Our message is that important progress has been made, but more needs to be done. At the time when a new Commission, new European Commission will take its duties in the coming days, when the EU and the Member States are discussing the political priorities and actions for the next European budget 2021-2027, we jointly call together with Europol for an upgrade of priorities and resources proportional to the importance of the emerging threats. Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much, Alexi. I'd now like to give the floor to the Europol Executive Director, Catherine de Bol. Thank you. Commissioner, yeah. <laughs> Always grateful for your help, Commissioner. Yeah. Dear Commissioner, dear Alexis, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, the availability of drugs in the EU is at an unprecedented high level. Organized crime constitutes the highest and the most diverse risk for our EU citizens. Today, we present you the Drug Report 2019. This is the third edition of the joint analysis of Europol and the EMCDDA of the illicit drugs market. Every three years, we publish such a joint analysis. The report is important because it's the reference for future strategies to combat drugs production and drugs trafficking. First of all, it focuses on the impact and the consequences of illicit drugs in the EU. And second, it looks into the main drugs markets and it explores also possible responses on the national level, on the international level, to counter the production of drugs and the, and the supply of narcotics. Organized crime constitutes the highest and the most diverse risk for the EU member states. What we see is that the organized crime groups are becoming more complex, highly international, and they infiltrate in the legal economy. Polycriminality is a key feature for them. They use more and more violence and they use more and more corruption. Contract killings and other types of violence associated with drug trafficking is increasing and is expanding in the European Union. High-risk crime groups use corruption to infiltrate in the public and in the private sector organizations. The drugs market is the largest criminal market in the European Union. When we look for 2018 to our intelligence at Europol level, we can see that the organized crime groups involved in cocaine trafficking to EU may have profited for at least 40 billion euros, which is nearly one fourth of the 2019 EU budget. Same figures, from our intelligence for 2018 for the production of synthetic drugs in the EU uh, by organized crime groups. And we still believe that these figures are an underestimation. The increasing profits of organized crime threatens, as the commissioner said, and as Alexis said, our internal security, our economy, the public health, and the integrity. Asset tracing has to be reinforced. We do not seize enough and we do not confiscate enough. What can be the, the answers to, to counter this threat? We need to support the EU member states, the law enforcement community in the EU member states in cross-border investigations even more. We need to support the resource intensive operations. Therefore, we need to invest in specialized skills, analysis, IT forensic, special tactics, technical support. We developed with, us, with the support of the commissioner, the uh, concepts of the high value targets and the operational task forces against individuals and organizations constituting the highest security risks. We want to have the big bosses in the organized crime area. We started since late 2018 with this approach. 125 high value targets were selected. 
21 operational task forces have been established, 31 investigations have been supported, so far 400 suspects were arrested, including 51 high-value targets and the seizure of a variety of assets. Targeted investigation prove to have a broad security impact beyond specific right areas. And to increase the impact against drug trafficking and organized crime, we believe that we need to intensify the exchange of operational information even more. We have to increase our focus and our presence at key geographical locations. We need cooperation outside the EU with the source countries. We need a common EU response to criminal use of the new technology. And here, innovative approaches are key. Encrypted communications, online trade, trade cryptocurrencies are current now uh, in the use by serious and organized crime groups. More investments in Europol and more investments in the EMCDDA to support all these measures are needed. The European Union and especially the Commissioner for Justice and Home Affairs, you have, been done, you have done a lot in uh, the past and we hope that we can continue and even strengthen the approach regarding serious and organized crime in the European Union with a focus on drugs. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. So uh, before we move to the Q&A session where you'll be able to uh, ask your technical questions to both agencies, uh, the Commissioner will have to leave us for another appointment. But if you'd like to say your goodbyes now and take a picture. Well, I said what I had to say before. <coughs> As I said, I'm living in two days' time. Actually, it's my last uh, institutional um, um, activity in uh, Brussels. Once again, I would like to thank you all, to thank Catherine and Alexis, and of course the people behind them mm -hmm. who are doing the, the real job. Um, we shall keep being in contact. We don't know what the future is holding for us, but one thing is sure, what we have done during the last five years, have established a very strong and good friendship and relationship. Yeah. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thanks for everything. Thank you. <coughs> Let's get it. Okay, um, so thank you everybody. So we'll now uh, move to the question and answer session. Uh, we, apart from the two directors here, we also have many of our experts in the room from both agencies, as well as the um, Belgian focal point from the RATOX network. Um, so if you would like to start asking your questions and um, state your name and the media you're representing. So um, are there any questions for the panel? Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Inder Bugarin from El Universal a newspaper, Mexico. Um, five years ago, at least, Europe launched an alert about the presence of the uh, cartel of Sinaloa and the Zetas in Europe. Um, now, this report is telling us that the Mexican cartels are increasing their presence in the business of cocaine and crystal meth. What this report is telling us about the activities of the Mexican cartels here in Europe. And um, Director of Europol, you just said that you need more cooperation with uh, another third countries. Uh, since at least five years ago, you have been negotiating with Mexico an agreement of cooperation. What is going on with this agreement? So thank you for your question. 
Uh, first of all, regarding the cartels, I will refer to my colleague who is here and specialized in uh, the whole overview of the market. Regarding the cooperation with South America, we have an uh, operational agreement with Colombia. We ha will have a um, working arrangement. This means that we cannot exchange personal data with uh, Brazil. This has been voted in, in their, um, on their institutional level. And indeed, with Mexico, uh, we need to cooperate more and further. We went uh, to uh, South America a few weeks ago uh, to have a good view on what is going on and to, uh, to strive for more cooperation uh, with them regarding the issue we have uh, in the European Union, to have more cases together. Um, the focus was on um, Colombia and uh, Brazil because of the, uh, oper the cooperation agreements that, were, that are already in place or will be in place in a few weeks. But regarding Mexico, we need to do a bit more. Uh, the information uh, we get, uh, we need uh, from a Europol perspective and from a EU ex ex perspective, perspective from third countries is key for us. We need this information to have a good view on what is going on in the European Union and what is the impact of the serious and organized crime groups and what are the links with the other continents. We see, for instance, that there is a clear link uh, between organized crime groups in uh, South America and in the European Union. And we see that the methodologies and the violence and the techniques used by organized crime groups in South America also are used now in the European Union. We are not used to it. We see now an increase of violence in a lot of countries. Uh, we see more corruption. And uh, we see, and it is confirmed, direct links between organized crime groups in the Union and in the third countries. But I would like to give the floor to my colleagues regarding the um, presence of the Mexican cartels in the Union. Okay, thank you for the question. Uh, Les Fianda, I'm head of the drugs team at Europol. Um, I mean, Mexican organized crime has been very prevalent for many years, particularly in the cocaine trade. Um, there's a big issue, of course, um, with Mexican organized crime uh, in the sense of um, supply of fentanyl, which is an extremely dangerous drug. It's something we're very concerned about in Europe. Uh, quite recently, we've seen evidence of Mexicans involved in the illicit production of methamphetamine uh, in Europe, and this is quite unprecedented. It's quite a wake-up call for us. Um, they have been found in methamphetamine laboratories. They have been linked to uh, an incredibly large seizure of methamphetamine. So we are, of course, keeping a, a close eye, a watching brief. Uh, we, we're, we're gathering as much intelligence as we can to identify uh, those high-value targets who are behind this um, activity. Thank you very much. Do we have another question from anybody? Yeah. Um, the scale of the problem is obviously enormous. Um, in terms of what uh, the European Union can do as, a, as an organisation to help you, I mean, what would you say the main things are? And, I mean, is it uh, finding the the money and you know tighter anti-money laundering? But we, we what we know is that this isn't working very well. And in terms of risk and reward, it seems to be um, a low risk, uh, high reward career option for many people. Um, are, are there any? Are there more radical <laughs> solutions? I mean, legalization always comes up as a as a a suggestion and certainly when you look at the scale of the problem the resources that go into it and the you know for example i don't know about other countries but certainly in the uk a high proportion of the those who are incarcerated are links to drugs so um are there more innovative ways of tackling this problem I will um, uh, explain you how we see it from a law enforcement perspective. What is very important is that all the police chiefs of the European Union agree on one fact, that we have a real issue with drugs and that serious and organized crime is becoming more and more important. So we need to have a plan and we need to have a strategy to tackle it and we need to find common answers. 
And there we see that there is an, um, a real will from the uh, law enforcement community to work together and to share more, um, and to share more information. Uh, we need to be creative um, on the European level. We need to look for new um, answers to the threats because our regular only seizures are not enough. We need to work in depth. So from a police perspective, we say that we have to exchange even more operational data regarding drugs. When you have an issue in one country, it can have an impact in another country. When you have a modus operandi in one country, it can be relevant for a modus operandi in another country. So we have to exchange information as much as we can. Secondly, we have to focus really on the key areas on a geographical level. What are the key geographical locations for us and how will we deal with these source countries and how will we try to give the answers? And then um, the new technologies we have uh, to do with a global organization, a global, con uh, a global problem. Uh, the innovation and the technology are very much used by um, the serious and organized crime groups. So we have to be innovative too. And we really have to invest in more expertise, in IT forensic, in specialized skills. And of course, this is very resource demanding. So this means that we need to pool our resources to come with a global answer. That is why we need to work with experts for the whole of the European Union, not only experts in each country. So we need uh, to have people who can use the new technologies and the new methodologies in uh, the uh, investigations uh, they, are, um, they are dealing with. Uh, at Europol level, we introduced this approach from high value targets. So at the national level, you look at the criminals you have to deal with, and you make an uh, analysis of the most important ones, and you, you go after them. On a European level, we do the same. We make a list of the big bosses of the organized crime groups, and then together with the member states, we try uh, to we, we make an action plan and we determine who will do what in this action. And we see that this approach is a good one. Um, it's about the investigation, but it's also about economical and financial crime investigation. It's about money laundering. It's about corruption. That is why we decided at Europol, uh, with the management board in December uh, last year, that Europol will create a center related to serious, to um, economical and financial crime. We are now assessing what the member states need, how do they manage uh, their economical and financial crime issues, and what is the expectation from a European perspective. So we are, expect we are investing in it. It's a high level um, um, expertise you need in that one. So it's also about pooling resources and trying to get the best experts for the benefit of the whole of the European Union. We have a problem. And we are determined uh, to, to try to find answers to the problem. And we have uh, to be creative and innovative to find new ways to tackle uh, the drugs issues we are confronted with at the moment. Yes, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that uh, uh, when, you, when you say that uh, we know it is not working very well, I would like uh, to, to give you a much more uh, positive image because uh, there is a very close cooperation between the EU member states and also between the Justice and Home Affairs agencies. Uh, we just have uh, both country and myself for a meeting of the directors of Justice and Home Affairs uh, agencies network last week that took place in uh, Europol in Den Haag. So there is a very close cooperation. There is the European strategy on drugs uh, that is delivering results. Uh, that's the only regional uh, policy and strategy that has an external evaluation and that is based on evidence. So um, is everything perfect? No. Do we have new challenges? Yes. Uh, but certainly to say that things do not work very well, uh, it's, it's certainly a bit, uh, a bit uh, too dark uh, as an image. And, but I think it highlights one, one thing I, I wanted to, to say is the fact that we do a lot of things, and we do a lot of things, especially Europol at the operational level. We do together with other agencies the strategic and holistic analysis. The problem we have for the moment is not so much about the EU level. 
is the fact that over the last 25 years, and you mentioned the UK, there have been a lot of innovative responses to drug use and treatment. And uh, the problem is that there were so many good responses that part of the problem that was associated to heroin use and the negative health consequences uh, is less visible because it's better addressed. We consider there are more or less 1.2 million of people in treatment today in the EU. This was not the case 25 years ago. So in parallel with that, the, the drugs and the different substances, natural and synthetic, they have disseminated throughout the entire society, but they are less visible, or at least the negative consequences you don't see them in the streets with people dying from overdose. So I think one of the main challenges we are facing, and uh, we, we are uh, actively working on that together with uh, Catherine, the colleagues of Europol, but also the other EU agencies who are also working partly on drugs, is the fact that if there is a clear pro priority at the EU level, in the member states it's not always the case because it's not perceived as important because it lacks visibility. So I think what the report today is showing is that despite the fact that, or because of those changes in the expression of the problem, the fact that now it is invading the entire society is the first time, five years ago, we were not mentioning problems of, cor or so important problems related to violence, homicides, or corruption. So situation is changing, so this is why we say it's a wake-up call. It's not a wake-up call in the sense you do nothing, you should do something. No, it's the fact that we have delivered at European level what we were being asked to do. We have a very close cooperation, and this report is the example of many things all agencies in the area of justice and home affairs do together. Now the question is, there is a discussion about the priorities for the next seven years, and in the meeting of the Justice and Home Affairs Ministers last year in December, one country mentioned drugs. So the message is, look at the evidence, use, make even better use of the, what the EU and the EU agencies are doing, but take into account that the situation has changed, and don't look only at terrorism or migration, because drugs, as the Commissioner said, they are a problem both for health and for security, and that's what we are contributing. Next question, please. Hello. Hi, I'm Mark from Associated Press. Um, you've outlined the difficulties with the drug markets. The war on drugs has been going on longer than I've been alive. It's been going on longer than the war in Afghanistan. Are we ever going to reach a situation where we view a solution as legalization, regulation, and taxation? You've mentioned the violence with um, legalization got rid of the violence of the uh, alcohol sales during prohibition in the US. Would you think that would be a solution for this area too with organized crime and taxation? You've mentioned the billions in euros that are being traded in this industry and you highlight the enormously high figures. Would taxation be a good thing in this scenario? Can you please share your thoughts? So from Catherine, <laughs> thank you very much. So thank you for your question. I think it's a very important question because obviously nobody can imagine that uh, there is such a problem of availability just because it is prohibited. Let's be clear on that. So the fact that it is a global problem and it has many factors, this is what we describe in the, in the report, and uh, if there was a magic solution to be found, it would already have been used. So the situation is, they are produ there is production, there are different be uh, uh, addictive behaviors, and we have not here mentioned gambling and gaming that are also getting traction everywhere in the, in the world, including in Europe. So there is something that has to do with, with the, the fact that we are human beings and that some people in some circumstances uh, in the specific uh, setting may be willing to use substances or be uh, using or having addictive behaviors. What, what we see, of course, we observe uh, with, uh, with the interest and curiosity what is happening in the US or in other countries like Canada or Uruguay. Uh, for the moment, it's, it is, uh, I think, really premature to have any uh, conclusion about it. Um, 
uh, what we also see is that there are new problems that are created with uh, some policy changes at uh, state level, for instance, in the US. Uh, what we also see is that there is an increasing number of uh, non-European countries visiting the EU to look at what is the so-called balanced approach in the EU, which is combining demand reduction, harm reduction, and lo strong law enforcement action, including the example of countries like Portugal who have decriminalized drug use. Doesn't mean it is legalized, but this has changed the, the orientation uh, and, and the, the issue or the, the merit of the policy in Portugal is not only to have decriminalized, they have not done that only. They have done together investment in demand reduction, treatment, prevention, harm reduction interventions, and a strong investment in fighting, uh, uh, fighting against the supply. So I think what is important is to understand that we need a more holistic approach, understanding and action. And there we see differences that are in the other way around. Last year, there, were, there was an estimate of 72,000 people who died from overdose associated to opioids, in particular fentanyls in the US. In Europe, there were approximately 9,500. So to say it is a failure, fa failure or to say that the war on drugs doesn't work first, we don't do war on drugs. We have a balanced approach in Europe. We don't have perfect results, but there are results and there are achievements. And uh, as we had the question last, uh, last uh, week uh, from a journalist, uh, the fact that only last year there were 50 tons of cocaine that were seized in Antwerp, and another 50 tons that had as a destination Antwerp that were seized outside Europe, it shows that judiciary cooperation works. And that's an achievement because we have 28 countries in the EU plus the other outside. And of course, it's not easy. The legal systems are different, the culture are different, but it works. So what the report shows is that, okay, there are not magic solutions, but there, are, there is best practice, there is evidence, and today what we need is to continue the effort and to make sure that for the next strategy, the EU strategy will be evaluated next year, and EMCDDA and Europol, they are contributing, providing evidence for that evaluation. I think what is important is to have everybody on board. And today, we, this means in a moment where there are also budgetary constraints, we need to make sure that we also give the right level of priority to address, not to fight, the drugs issue in the European Union. Thank you. Are there any other questions from the room? Very quiet. No? Okay, um, we, we have the room for about another hour, and there are some uh, interviews booked uh, in advance. So I suggest that we close the press conference now, and then we move to the interview stage. So thank you very much for coming, everybody. Thank you. See you later. Thank you. Thank you.